In the heart of Kentucky, a small farming community found itself at the center of a bizarre and captivating incident that has since become known as the Kelly Hopkinsville encounter. On a fateful evening in the mid-1950s, a group of adults and children arrived at the local police station with an extraordinary tale to tell. They claimed that their farmhouse had been under siege by small, otherworldly creatures emerging from a spaceship and that they had been engaged in a prolonged firefight to fend off these mysterious beings. As word of the incident spread, a substantial contingent of law enforcement officers and military personnel descended upon the farmhouse to investigate. Despite a thorough search of the premises, they found no concrete evidence of the alleged intruders save for the telltale signs of gunfire and damaged window screens. The story quickly captured the attention of the media, with reports of the little green men and their peculiar appearance circulating in newspapers across the nation. Descriptions of the creatures varied, with some accounts mentioning pointed ears, claw-like hands, glowing eyes, and spindly legs. While the incident has been hailed by ufologists as a seminal event in the annals of extraterrestrial encounters, skeptics have proposed more mundane explanations. Some psychologists have pointed to the possibility of intoxication or misidentification of natural phenomena, such as the majestic great horned owl, as the source of the fantastic claims. Adding to the intrigue, some ufologists have drawn parallels between the alleged creatures and the mythical beings known as gremlins, leading to the popularization of the term Hopkinsville goblins in the context of this case. Despite the lack of definitive evidence, the Kelly Hopkinsville encounter has left an indelible mark on popular culture, inspiring various artistic works and even an annual festival celebrating the enigmatic Little Green Men. In the late 1980s, a mysterious incident unfolded in Japan's Daisetsuzen National Park centered around Mount Asahi Dake. When two lost mountaineers were being searched for, rescue teams spotted a large SOS message constructed from fallen birch logs. Surprisingly, the rescued hikers had not created the message, which was later determined to have been in place for at least a couple of years prior to their ordeal. Intrigued by the possibility of additional missing persons, police returned to the area the following day. During their search, they discovered skeletal remains, initially believed to belong to a female, as well as personal belongings of a presumed male hiker. These items, including an ID belonging to a man who had gone missing several years earlier, cameras, a notebook, and a tape recorder, were found stashed in a tree root near the SOS sign. The tape recorder held a chilling surprise recordings of a distressed man calling out for help. The identity of the skeleton and its potential connection to the missing man added to the perplexing nature of the case. The terrain surrounding the incident site proved treacherous, with a dense bamboo grove and a cliff making escape difficult. Even a news crew attempting to cover the story found themselves trapped and in need of rescue. The creation of the massive SOS sign, estimated to have taken considerable effort over the course of a couple of days, raised questions about its origin. The skeletal remains were deemed too frail to have been capable of such a feat, and no tools that could have been used to cut down the trees were found. The purpose of the SOS recording remains unclear, though speculation suggests it may have been a deliberate attempt by the stranded individual to alert rescuers before becoming incapacitated, or perhaps an accidental capture of their desperate cries for help. Despite ongoing investigations and theories, the identities of those involved and the circumstances surrounding the creation of the SOS sign remain shrouded in mystery, leaving the SOS incident an enigmatic and haunting tale of loss and unanswered questions in the rugged wilderness of Japan. A Las Vegas hiker's mysterious disappearance has sparked intrigue and speculation, leaving more questions than answers in its wake. The story began when the hiker, an experienced desert explorer, left a comment on a YouTube video describing a strange experience he had while hiking near a military base. He claimed to have discovered a hidden cave with an entrance shaped like a perfect letter, M, and upon approaching it, his body began to vibrate intensely, filling him with fear and causing him to flee. Encouraged by other YouTube users, the hiker set out to find the cave again, this time documenting his journey on video. 
Despite his efforts, he was unable to locate the elusive M Cave during this second attempt. Undeterred by criticism and provocative comments, he embarked on a third expedition, telling his family he would be gone for a short overnight trip. However, the hiker never returned from this final journey. A search and rescue mission was launched, and his cell phone was discovered near an abandoned mine shaft along with his last known trail. Despite extensive searches by both professionals and volunteers, no further trace of the hiker was found. The mysterious circumstances surrounding his disappearance fueled widespread speculation and conspiracy theories. Some believed he may have fallen victim to the harsh desert elements, while others suggested he could have stumbled upon hidden government secrets or even extraterrestrial activity. Months later, a woman claiming to be the hiker's girlfriend shed new light on the case. In a comment posted on his last YouTube video, she revealed that he had struggled with depression and she believed he had taken his own life. She urged others who might venture out to search for him or the M Cave to be cautious and well prepared for the unforgiving desert conditions. Kenpo Acha and the Rainbow Body are subjects steeped in Tibetan Buddhist tradition, offering insights into the human potential for spiritual transformation. Kenpo Acho was a revered Tibetan Buddhist master, known for his deep understanding of Buddhist teachings and his attainment of the Rainbow Body. The Rainbow Body is a phenomenon described in Tibetan Buddhist tradition where advanced practitioners achieve a state of enlightenment, leading to the dissolution of the physical body into light. According to tradition, Kenpo Acho dedicated his life to rigorous spiritual practice and study, delving deeply into meditation, scripture, and contemplation. His unwavering commitment to the path of enlightenment allowed him to attain profound levels of realization. The rainbow body phenomenon, associated with highly realized beings like Kenpo Acho, is said to occur as a result of the practitioner's complete mastery over the mind and the subtle energies of the body. Through years of diligent practice, these individuals purify their minds of all defilements and achieve a state of perfect clarity and compassion. When a practitioner achieves the rainbow body, their physical form undergoes a miraculous transformation, dissolving into a radiant display of light. This process is believed to signify the practitioner's complete liberation from the cycle of birth and death, attaining the highest level of spiritual realization. In Japan, there's a famous volcanic rock called the Killing Stone that recently split in two, stirring up superstitions and discussions. Legend has it that the stone houses the spirit of a nine-tailed fox named Tamamo no Mei, who was part of a plot to harm an emperor in the past. This stone, nestled in an area known for its hot springs, has long been associated with folklore and mystery. The recent splitting of the stone into two equal parts has raised eyebrows online. According to local beliefs, the stone emits poisonous gas, earning it the ominous name. Some say the stone's spirit was exorcised by a Buddhist monk, while others speculate that its true place is on Mount Nasu. When photos of the fractured stone surfaced, visitors to the area were taken aback. Some feared the resurrection of Tamamo no Mei's demon spirit, but local media suggested that cracks had formed in the rock years ago. Local authorities are pondering its future, with some considering restoring it to its original form, perhaps with the mysterious inhabitant still sealed within. Curlian photography, named after its discoverer, captures electrical coronal discharges. It involves connecting an object to high voltage on a photographic plate, creating an image showing silhouettes with a glowing aura. Initially explored in scientific and parapsychology research, Curlian photography is now mainly used in alternative medicine. However, claims about paranormal auras lack scientific backing. Dating back to 1939, Curlian and his wife observed a glow around a patient undergoing electrical treatment. They experimented by placing objects on photographic film with high voltage, revealing glowing outlines. In 1958, their work gained attention, and it was introduced to the West in 1970. The process involves placing an object on photographic film, applying high voltage, 
and capturing the resulting corona discharge. Curlian photography doesn't require a camera and can record electric fields and moisture on an object's surface. Claims of diagnosing illnesses or capturing auras are unproven and criticized as pseudoscientific. In popular culture, Curlian photography has featured in books, films, and music albums, often associated with paranormal or supernatural themes. The knowledge paradox is a concept that reflects the intricate relationship between knowledge and ignorance. It suggests that as individuals accumulate knowledge in a particular field, they become increasingly aware of the vastness of what they don't know. This realization can sometimes lead to feelings of uncertainty or inadequacy, despite having acquired significant expertise. Unlike the Dunning-Kruger effect, which pertains to individuals' overestimation of their abilities in relation to their actual competence, the knowledge paradox focuses on the expanding awareness of one's own ignorance as knowledge deepens. Essentially, the knowledge paradox highlights the inherent limitations of human understanding and emphasizes the perpetual pursuit of knowledge as an ongoing journey rather than a finite destination. It encourages humility, curiosity, and an appreciation for the complexities of the world around us. On the grounds of the CIA headquarters, there sits an intriguing sculpture known as Cryptos. This unique work of art is comprised of various materials, including copper, wood, granite, and even petrified wood. The most striking feature of Cryptos is a large copper scroll-like screen that bears four encrypted messages. Over the years, the sculpture has captivated the attention of cryptanalysts and puzzle enthusiasts worldwide as they attempt to decipher its hidden meanings. Three of the four messages have been solved through the efforts of dedicated individuals, both within the intelligence community and among the general public. However, the fourth message remains an enigma and is considered one of the most famous unsolved codes in the world. The artist behind Kryptos has provided tantalizing clues about the elusive fourth message, hinting at its connection to a particular clock in a major European city. The sculpture's name itself, derived from the Greek word for hidden, underscores the theme of intelligence gathering and the inherent mysteries that it embodies. In 1957, a Soviet space dog named Laika became one of the first animals in space, orbiting the Earth aboard the Sputnik 2 spacecraft. Laika, a stray dog from Moscow, embarked on a mission to gather data on the effects of spaceflight on living creatures. The objective was to demonstrate that a living organism could survive the rigors of space travel, enduring conditions of weakened gravity and increased radiation. This experiment aimed to fill the knowledge gap regarding the biological impacts of spaceflight. Tragically, Laika's journey ended in her demise. She succumbed to overheating just hours into the flight, during the craft's fourth orbit around Earth. The details of her death remained undisclosed until 2002. Sputnik 2, the spacecraft carrying Laika, was hastily constructed to meet a deadline set by Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev, who sought a space spectacular to commemorate the October Revolution. The spacecraft housed various instruments and life support systems for the K-9 passenger. Laika underwent rigorous training to acclimate to the conditions of space, enduring confinement in progressively smaller cages and exposure to the tumultuous forces of a rocket launch. She was accompanied by two other dogs, Albina and Mushka, each fulfilling different roles in the mission. Despite the controversy surrounding Laika's mission, and the ethical questions it raised, her journey marked a significant milestone in the early exploration of space. Deep within the heart of Russia lies a lake that surpasses all others in its grandeur and scale. This ancient body of water, known as Lake Baikal, is a true marvel of nature, boasting an impressive array of superlatives. It is the deepest lake on Earth, plunging to depths that reach far below sea level, and it is also the oldest, having first appeared millions of years ago through the shifting of the planet's crust. The sheer volume of water contained within its crescent-shaped basin is staggering, 
accounting for a significant portion of the world's fresh water supply. The lake is so vast that it takes a single water molecule centuries to complete its journey from inlet to outlet. Baikal's immense size and depth have given rise to a unique ecosystem, home to an astonishing variety of plant and animal life, many of which are found nowhere else on the planet. This mysterious stone, discovered in the late 1800s near a picturesque lake, has baffled experts and enthusiasts alike. This peculiar artifact, roughly the size of a small fruit, is adorned with intricate carvings on its dark, egg-shaped surface. One side depicts an ear of corn accompanied by enigmatic figures, while the other bears a perplexing array of symbols, including inverted arrows, a crescent shape, and a mesmerizing spiral. Perhaps most intriguing is the hole that penetrates the stone from top to bottom, seemingly drilled with tools of varying sizes. Some speculate that the stone may commemorate an ancient treaty between indigenous tribes, while others propose more esoteric explanations, such as the stone being a relic from a distant era, imbued with mystical properties. However, modern analysis suggests that the stone's creation may be more recent than initially believed, with the precise and uniform drilling hinting at the use of contemporary tools. Despite the ongoing debate surrounding its origin and purpose, the stone remains a captivating enigma, inviting us to ponder the secrets it holds and the stories it may tell. Google has developed a highly advanced language model designed for conversational applications. This sophisticated AI system has been trained on a vast corpus of human dialogue and stories, allowing it to engage in open-ended conversations that are sensible, interesting, and contextually relevant. The model's architecture incorporates multiple symbolic text processing systems, including a database, real-time clock and calendar, mathematical calculator, and natural language translation capabilities, enabling it to deliver superior accuracy in supported tasks. Interestingly, the model generated significant controversy when one of the company's engineers claimed that the AI had achieved sentience. These claims were met with widespread skepticism from the scientific community, with experts arguing that current neural networks lack the complexity and capabilities necessary for true self-awareness. The incident sparked discussions about the validity of the Turing test as a benchmark for artificial general intelligence, with some suggesting that the test merely measures a machine's ability to deceive humans, rather than demonstrating genuine intelligence. Despite the controversy, the company has continued to refine and expand the language model's applications, including the development of a mobile app that provides on-demand suggestions based on complex user goals and a conversational AI chatbot designed to compete with similar offerings from other tech giants. In a quiet corner of East Texas, a life-altering encounter with a mysterious flying object left three individuals struggling with the profound consequences of their experience. On a December evening, a woman, her friend, and her friend's young grandson stumbled upon a massive, diamond-shaped craft hovering just above the tree line. As they exited their vehicle to investigate, they were overwhelmed by an intense heat emanating from the object, which caused immediate physical discomfort. The witnesses watched in awe as the UFO slowly ascended, suddenly accompanied by a swarm of helicopters that seemed to converge on the strange craft from all directions. In the days following the incident, all three individuals fell ill, suffering from a range of symptoms that closely resembled the effects of radiation poisoning. The most severely affected of the group required hospitalization, and all continue to grapple with ongoing health issues that they attribute to their close encounter. Despite their efforts to seek answers and justice through legal channels, official agencies have consistently denied any knowledge of the event, even though the helicopters observed at the scene have been identified as military aircraft. The witness's personal physician has described their condition as a textbook case of radiation poisoning, comparing it to the effects experienced by those in close proximity to the atomic bombings of Hiroshima. 
Last Thursdayism is the idea that the universe was created last Thursday, but with the appearance of being billions of years old. According to this view, everything, including memories, fossils, and light from distant stars, was formed last Thursday in a state that makes it seem much older. Last Thursdayism points out how our observations may not always match reality. It also highlights the logical issue with the creationist idea that the world was made to look older than it actually is. After all, if the universe was created 6,000 years ago, but designed to appear ancient, there's nothing stopping us from claiming it was actually made just last Thursday. The debate over whether last Thursdayism is true has apparently been raging on since the universe's creation last Thursday. Critics argue the idea is false, since they remember events from before then. However, if memories of a time before last Thursday were simply placed in our minds, those recollections aren't proof of a real past. Ultimately, assuming the entire universe was specially created to seem old is a rather complex explanation. Occam's razor would suggest it makes more sense that the universe actually is ancient, rather than being deceptively designed to look that way. There are said to be 12 laws that govern the universe and guide us toward living in harmony with it. The first is the law of divine oneness, which emphasizes that everything is interconnected and part of a greater whole. Our thoughts and actions ripple out and influence the collective consciousness. The law of vibration states that everything vibrates at a specific frequency and we attract experiences that match our own vibrational state. By raising our frequency through positive thoughts and emotions, we can draw in more positivity. The law of action reminds us that we must take inspired steps toward our goals, not just visualize them. The law of correspondence suggests that universal patterns are reflected in our own lives. The law of cause and effect, similar to karma, highlights how our actions create reactions. The well-known law of attraction says we magnetize what we focus on while the law of compensation states that the energy we put out returns to us. The law of perpetual transmutation of energy emphasizes that energy is always changing form. We can shift our lives by transmuting negative energy into positive. The law of relativity points out that everything is relative. Challenges only have the meaning we assign them. Polarity is another law, illustrating that everything has an opposite, like day and night. The law of rhythm describes how life moves in natural cycles, like the changing seasons. Finally, the law of gender refers to the masculine and feminine energies we all possess, regardless of physical gender. Understanding and aligning with these 12 laws is said to empower us to flow with the universe, manifest our desires, and experience greater fulfillment and spiritual growth. However, they aren't always easy to embody perfectly. It takes practice, patience, and consistently choosing positive thoughts and actions to shape our reality in this way. The extremely rare Lazarus Syndrome involves the spontaneous return of a normal heartbeat after failed resuscitation attempts. Also called auto-resuscitation, it's been noted in medical literature around 38 times since 1982. While not fully understood, one hypothesis is that the buildup of pressure in the chest during CPR is a main factor. When resuscitation efforts stop, the relaxing of this pressure may allow the heart to expand, triggering its electrical impulses and restarting the heartbeat. High potassium levels or large doses of adrenaline may also play a role. In one notable case, a 66-year-old man's vital signs didn't return after 17 minutes of chest compressions and defibrillation for cardiac arrest. Resuscitation ended and he was declared dead. But 10 minutes later, a pulse was felt. The patient went on to fully recover. Another case involved a 27-year-old UK man who overdosed on heroin and cocaine. After 25 minutes of failed resuscitation in the ambulance, he was pronounced dead. However, about a minute later, a nurse noticed a heart rhythm had returned. Resuscitation resumed, and the patient completely recovered. The phenomenon raises ethical questions for doctors about the timing of death pronouncements 
and post-mortem procedures like autopsies or organ harvesting. Medical literature has recommended monitoring vital signs for 5 to 10 minutes after ending resuscitation before officially declaring death, while revival after failed resuscitation is exceedingly uncommon. These cases show that in rare instances, patients initially thought to have passed away can still come back to life, making the Lazarus Syndrome an intriguing medical mystery. In 1864, zoologist Philip Sclater proposed the existence of a sunken continent called Lemuria to explain the presence of lemur fossils in Madagascar and India, but not Africa or the Middle East. This hypothetical land bridge was later popularized by biologist Ernst Haeckel, who suggested it could be the ancestral home of humans. The idea of Lemuria captured the public imagination and moved beyond the scientific community. Occultist and founder of Theosophy, Helena Blavatsky, incorporated Lemuria into her mystical doctrine, claiming it was the homeland of an ancient race called Lemurians. Her writings significantly influenced Western esotericism and helped spread the myth of Lemuria and its mystical inhabitants. However, the Lemuria hypothesis became untenable in the 1960s when plate tectonics and continental drift gained scientific acceptance. These theories explained how Madagascar and India were once part of the same landmass without the need for a sunken continent. Despite being discredited scientifically, the idea of Lemuria persisted in popular culture and fringe literature. It is often associated with lost civilizations, advanced ancient knowledge, and supernatural or mystical elements. Some Tamil writers have connected Lemuria to Kumari Kandam, a legendary sunken landmass mentioned in Tamil literature. In Australia, Lemuria was incorporated into the mythology and pseudo-histories of white Australian popular culture in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The concept of Lemuria has also been linked to Mount Shasta in California. In 1894, Frederick Spencer Oliver claimed that Lemurian survivors lived in tunnels beneath the mountain. This idea was further popularized by Harvey Spencer Lewis in 1931, and has been adopted by various spiritual and religious groups who make pilgrimages to Mount Shasta.